The world of women is full of mystery and monsters. In no way do I think I'm like some sort of a guru that has all of the answers to love. But after a point, you just see so much bad advice on the internet that you feel compelled to say something. I see this narrative going around that in order for a man to be worthy of having a girlfriend or having a great woman, he has to be a 666. Six feet, six figures, six pack. Like, that's not how it works. Um, you can find real, honest, passionate, lifetime enduring love at any shape, any size, any income level. It really doesn't have a whole lot to do with that. Love is about who a person is, not what they can do for you. And it's not just, I don't even mean that in the physical sense of, oh, this person can give me a great lifestyle or this person can give me a family. It's, it's deeper than that. It's, oh, I really like the way this person makes me feel about myself. It's not about the way this person is making you feel about yourself. It's about who that person is in her entirety or in his entirety. So if you only love someone because of the way she is making you feel about yourself, then you don't really love her. You just love the way you are reflected off of her, which isn't really love to begin with. This is exactly what happens in Jane Austen's Emma, which I made a whole video about, but Emma's friendship with Harriet the only reason Emma is friends with Harriet is because that friendship is making Emma feel good about herself. So for a lot of people, men and women, when they realize this truth about what love is and what real, passionate, enduring romance is, it kind of hits them that this person who you are allowing into your life has to be someone who is you're equal in every way, but not in the sense that you're the same as them, in a way that they complement you as one entire entity. Because you're gonna have to rely on this person, you're gonna have to trust this person, you're gonna have to be this person, basically. I know for me, when this light bulb first went off, I kind of felt like, am I ever going to find someone who's like as good as me? Like, who? Oh, my ring just flew off my hand. Okay, we're back. We're back. So the first step, obviously, is to first know who you are. Because then, otherwise, how are you supposed to even know what you're looking for? But to make matters even worse, you could have two people who are great people individually, but when you mix them together, it just turns into something completely different. So it's kind of like cooking, right? So let's say that you are dark chocolate. Great, great. And you find someone who's tomato soup. And tomato soup is really good by itself. And dark chocolate is really, really good by itself. But if you mix those two things together, that's terrible. Like no one wants dark chocolate and tomato soup combined. And so you could meet two, you could have two great individuals that don't complement each other. And there are also different things that people want too. So let's say I'm dark chocolate. Dark chocolate and nuts go really well together. So you could find someone who's like an almond. You could have dark chocolate almonds, but some people don't like dark chocolate almonds. So maybe what you're really looking for is a strawberry because strawberries are great by themselves. Dark chocolate is great by itself. And chocolate covered strawberries, something totally different, very complimentary, a new, great, wonderful thing 
that is arguably better than those two things individually. It's gonna unlock flavor palettes in both people. It's just, it's gonna blow both people's minds. It's something that the strawberry would never have even thought to experience unless the strawberry met the dark chocolate and vice versa. And you can't really go by what other people are doing either, right? Because let's say you're a pineapple and you have lots of friends who are also pineapples and they love getting with um, coconuts and vodka. I don't know what goes in a pina colada, whatever, you, you get the idea. But let's say you try that, but you don't really like coconut and pineapple together. Like nothing against the coconut. And then you might think, oh my God, is there something wrong with me? But then you find a pizza and that pizza is going to the same situation as you because they're like, oh my gosh, like I'm a pizza and everyone, all the other pizzas around me are going with cheese or pepperoni. And I don't really like any of those. And then you find a pineapple and the pineapple on the pizza is something that only you guys understand because everyone else thinks you're crazy. So, but there's a small percentage of people who like that. Does this make sense? I think it does. Anyway, that's just what I think of it as. But I've noticed that if you want certain qualities in your partner, you have to first embody them within yourself so that you can recognize it in a potential person. So let's say for example, you want a woman who's very emotionally intelligent. In order to be able to recognize emotional intelligence in someone else, you yourself have to develop emotional intelligence. And this is a great way to just like get out of the trenches, right? Do some basic work on yourself so you know that you're a good person. Not that you think you're a good person, but you actually know that you're a good person because sometimes our self-image can be a little warped from what we actually are. And no one's a stranger to that, especially not me. <laughs> um, but yeah, working on yourself does help you in that way when it comes to the dating pool. And this is where I think the 666 can get a little bit confusing because if someone has a six pack, right? There are certain things you have to do to get that six pack, right? Like you have to be disciplined. You have to have like a diet, a workout routine, stuff like that. So on one hand, it's a great way to see if someone has discipline. But on the other hand, why, why did they get that six pack? Did they get it because they're deeply insecure about everything else going on in their life? Are they getting it because they are emotionally wounded and they just have no other outlet? Or are they getting it because they genuinely value health and fitness? So that's why, you know, you can't really go off of that. And the same goes for a ton of money in your bank account. Yeah, you have a ton of money. How did you get that money? That's more important. Did you step on a bunch of people to get to the top? Did you do things the honest way? Did you always put your values first? Do you have values? Or are you just out here like thinking it's okay to have a secret girlfriend and just date other... Anyway, anyway, or flirt with other women, same thing, same thing. There is another really sad misconception that is going around on the internet. We all know that men have to do the pursuing, right? They have to go after the woman that they want and make the case that a relationship with them is worthwhile. Pro prove their love, right? <laughs> is what they have to do. Like, I love you and I am gonna show you that I do through my actions. And there are some people out here who seem to think that if they become a 666, or, or even just a 66, not even, they, they don't even need that third six. If they just have the six pack and the six figures in their bank account, they like really make it in their career and the mid thirties comes around and suddenly it's gonna flip and all the women are gonna be pursuing them and they can just pick. Like the women meet you at the finish line or whatever they're saying these days. And it's just, it's crazy to me because I see intelligent women 
giving what I what I think is pretty good advice and then leaving a little caveat. They're saying like, yeah, but if you're, you know, maybe he's the six figures, six foot, the six, 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 then, then maybe this won't apply to him. Yes, it does. I'm sorry. There is no version of reality where you as a man are able to sit here at the top of your career and on that alone be able to sit here and pick any woman that you want. And the reason why is because the women who are gonna be quote unquote throwing themselves at you are not going to be the women that you're gonna wanna be with. <laughs> when a man throws himself at the feet of a woman, it is a valiant thing to do. It is chivalry. It is the pursuit of something greater than himself. It is a chance to better his life, to add to his happiness. It is the gentleman's greatest quest. It is an act of courage. All these wonderful things, right? When a woman throws herself at a man, it is the lowest she will ever fall in this life. She loses the respect of all the women around her. She loses her credibility as, as a young woman. If she's an it girl, she loses that it girl status. If she has that it girl card, boom, taken away. If a woman is trading her self-respect for the acceptance of a man, she is actively contributing to the downfall of civilization as we know it. And that is why the pick me's in the world of women are just violently hated on, why being called a pick me or acting like a pick me is just the worst thing you can be called. But here's the tricky part, right? It's not black and white. It's not like just because you show interest in a guy does not mean that you're automatically compromising your standards. For women, coming up with standards is not the hard part. That part's pretty self-explanatory. The hard part is understanding that people are not perfect and you know trying to make the distinction between a bad man who is just taking advantage of your forgiveness and a good man who has made a mistake and who not just has the intention of fixing it but the capability to fix it and not just continue to cause you emotional pain and create this toxic cycle. Does the good outweigh the bad? That is always what we are asking ourselves. So if a man has a lot to offer, say he's a 666, <laughs> there are gonna be women out there, more women, who are going to see those positive, positive attributes as able to outweigh the negatives and some women are going to be able to put up with more, more of the negative attributes based on how highly they perceive those positives to be. So in that sense, yes, that type of man is going to have more options. But there is a secret that a lot of them do not realize until they finally make it there. Because for every man who has been building himself up from a very young age, maybe his early 20s or even younger than that, He's been actively working on himself. He's been building whatever it is he's doing for his career, his body, his mind, everything he's been working on. There is a woman who has also been doing the same thing, not because she wants a man, because she wants it for herself. <laughs> now, working on yourself is a really hard thing to do. I'm not saying that everyone needs to be doing it. Everyone needs to be compelled to go after it and be the absolute bestest possible version of themselves because it's going to cost you a lot of pain to become that person and in many cases you're gonna have to do a lot of sacrificing. The type of women who end up doing that, they become these like, they have the great career and they also just low-key look like a Victoria's Secret model and they are able to cultivate an ocean of love within themselves and share it with everyone around them. They have this gravitational pull everywhere that they go. They are able to pull even 
the darkest people out of the pits of despair. And it's because when you begin to cultivate love within yourself as a woman, the energy is like a Taurus. So the more light that you create, the more darkness you also kind of endure. It's like a, I'll put a, I'll put a graph like up here to kind of show what I'm talking about because it's an energy thing. Um, but that type of woman is very powerful and she can cultivate beauty from nothing. She can just, it is just the most amazing, amazing thing to witness. And if you are a man who has been working on himself in all facets of life, those are the men who are in the running to be with a woman like that. These women are very comfortable in their femininity. They're not overbearing and using their entire career as a personality trait. You're not gonna hear them say, I don't need a man. They're never gonna say like, oh, like I'm the boss, like whatever. Like they're gonna be very okay with their, their boyfriend or their husband taking the lead because they are not looking for love out of desperation. They are looking for a man to experience new dimensions of love with through romance, through family, through children. And, you know, it, it's not, it's not, oh, I'm an independent woman. Like, you have to listen to me. Like, it's not like that at all. And, and that's the double-edged sword of working on yourself for everybody, because the better you get, the better you're going to require as an equal partnership. And when it comes to that equal partnership, the man has to pursue the woman. You're not getting around that. And the worst part of this is if a man decides that he's gonna entertain the company of women who are just compromising their values and throwing themselves at him because they just wanna be, they just wanna be the token girl standing next to him, he is going to be very out of practice when it comes to pursuing and when he steps into that arena to compete for the attention of those amazing Amazonian women, Amazonian, I'm talking like it's Wonder Woman out here, and they'll think they're doing a lot and they're not because those girls are used to the world being just thrown at their feet by all of these men, like high and low. <laughs> because for those women, every guy has his stuff together. Every guy is great in his career. Every guy has done the work mentally, physically, emotionally. And then it's genuinely based on who am I? Who are you? And which one of these people is for me? I would also like to add that any girl can be that woman. Any, any girl can be that woman. And any man can be that man. It just requires getting up and doing the work every single day to make yourself the best version of yourself. And you don't need to do that to find love. You can literally just embody values that you wanna see in your partner and then sort that out with the options you get.